So it says, remark the power rule for integration has the restriction that n cannot equal negative one. Again, um, the n cannot equal negative one. This is exactly what I was talking about on the previous page, where this, what they're saying is, is the power rule does not work for the integral of one over x, right? So that's the integral of x to the negative one. If you ever see that, you know the answer has to be the natural log of the absolute value of x. Um, I haven't put my dx's there and I didn't put my plus c's there. I'm just trying to talk you through it. So that's not formally written down, but it, that's, that's the case they're talking about is when you have the natural log rule. Okay, so let's look at examples. How would you find the integral of 3x dx or the antiderivative? Again, the question is, what function do I take the derivative of and get 3x? Well, rather than having to sit and think about it, we know that we can pull the constant out in front and this is really x to the one, right? And so if we use the power rule, what you do is you take x to the power plus one now. So instead of x to the one, it'd be x to the one plus one. But then you have to divide it by that exact same number. And always remember your plus c. I'm not gonna lie, I usually only write the plus c in the final answer. Um, so you're not going to see me writing plus c's all the time. But what we're saying this would be is 3x squared over 2, which is really equal to 3 halves x squared plus c, right? So that's what they're saying the answer is. And how do we know? Well, take the derivative of your answer. What's the derivative of 3 halves x squared? Well, that'd be 3 halves times 2x, which would be 3x. Notice that's the exact same function we started with. So we know our answer is correct. It's awesome. We finally get to check our answers. And I love being able to check my answers knowing whether I'm right or wrong, whether I'm on the right path or not. And when we were doing derivatives, you do things like the quotient rule, the chain rule, the power rule, and you truly had no idea if your answer was correct or not unless you use technology to verify your answer. So finally, we can verify our answers on our own. So. That shows this example right here. It says, oh, sorry, let's put the answer in the answer blank. That was 3 halves x squared plus c. All right. So it says, when finding indefinite integrals, a strict application of the basic integration rules tends to produce complication, complicated constants of integration. For instance, in example two, the solution should have been written as the integral of 3x dx would be the integral of 3. We pulled out the 3 in front, right? But then it should have been 3 times x squared over 2 plus c. That's where the constant of integration should be. Well, then you would technically have to distribute the 3 to both. But remember, c is an arbitrary constant. It's any number. So 3 times c is still an arbitrary constant. So there's no point in writing 3 times c. So in other words, what do I do? I don't write the c until, usually I don't write the c until the very last step. And that's what you're gonna see me do many, many times, okay? So let's get practice in using that power rule. Let's make sure we can do this. So if you see the integral or antiderivative of one over x cubed dx, again, what do I take the derivative of to get one over x cubed? What you could do is rewrite this as the integral of x to the negative three with respect to x. Now we can actually integrate it using the power rule. So this would be x to the negative three plus one over that same number, okay? And now we can simplify that. That would be x to the negative 2 over negative 2, right? And when we simplify that, that would be negative 1 over 2x squared. And then, of course, on the end, we want to put the plus c. We've got to make sure we have the plus c. So how do we know our answer is right? Always, always double check your answer. The derivative with respect to x of negative 1 over 2x squared is the same thing as the derivative with respect to x of, what would that be, negative 1 half x to the negative 2. And that derivative would be negative 1 half times negative 2x to the negative 3, which would be, well, the negative 2s would simplify, and you would end up with 1 over x cubed, which is what the original problem was. So we know our answer is right, OK? How about this one, the antiderivative of the square root of x? So what do I take the derivative of it to get the square root of x? Well, we can look at this as the antiderivative of x to the 1 half with respect to x. 
So we're going to use the power rule, and the power rule says, what do you do? You do x to the 1 half plus 1 over that exact same number, 1 half plus 1. In this case, that would be what? x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. But if you remember, when you divide by a fraction, it's keep change flip or invert by the multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So in other words, just flip that fraction. Instead of 3 halves on bottom, it becomes 2 thirds out in front. And that'd be x to the 3 halves. But then again, never forget that plus c. Okay. Um, or we could have written this one in radical notation. Truly, I don't care about that anymore. But you could have had 2 thirds times the square root of x cubed plus c. But I don't care about that radical notation anymore. If you did it, I'd still give you full credit, of course. So how do we know this is right? Check your answer. What's the derivative of 2 thirds x to the 3 halves? That's our guess at our answer, right? So that would be 2 thirds times 3 halves x to the power minus 1, which would be 1 half. Notice the 2 thirds and the 3 halves simplify, and you're left with just x to the 1 half, which is the square root of x, which is the original function that we started with. So we did find the proper antiderivative. How about this one right here, the antiderivative of 2 sine of x dx. So this is going to be 2, pull that constant out in front, the antiderivative of sine of x with respect to x. We've got to be a little careful here because remember you're saying, what do you take the derivative of to get sine of x? And you might think that the answer is cosine of x, but that's not quite right. Why is that not quite right? Because the derivative of cosine of x is actually negative sine of x. So how do we compensate? We have to put a negative out in front. There's really no simplification on this one to do. So the answer is negative 2 cosine of x plus c. OK, how do we know that's right? Well, take the derivative. So what's the derivative with respect to x of negative 2 cosine of x? Well, that would be negative 2 times the derivative of cosine of x. And remember, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So this would be giving us 2 sine of x. Notice when I take the derivatives, uh oh, and that's the original problem, right? Notice when I take the derivatives, I never take the derivative of the plus c. It's a complete waste of time. Remember, the derivative of plus c every single time is going to be 0. So you never see me include that in checking my answer. It's just a total waste of time. OK. All right. How about the antiderivative of 3 over x? Well, isn't that the same thing as 3 times the antiderivative of 1 over x with respect to x? Pull out your constant multiple. Well, we know that that would be 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. You've got to be really, really careful with that one. You absolutely need the absolute value there. So this is 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. You have to have the absolute value there when you find the antiderivative. If you don't put the absolute value there, I'm going to write that in a note, must have absolute value. If you don't have that absolute value there, I have to take off credit. So be very, very careful with that. So the derivative with respect to x of 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x would be 3 times 1 over x, which is 3 over x, which is exactly what the original problem was. Find the antiderivative of 3 over x. We have done it. Okay. So again, we can just pull out those constant multiples. We've learned how to use the power rule, some of the other rules. Um, we've got to remember plus c's. So don't forget plus c. Um, in your answers, you have to remember plus c or I have to take off credit. So be careful with that. And always, always, always check your answers.